Sveiki visi, toliau tęsiam neredaguotą pokalbius ir šiandien yra blitz epizodas su, su žurnalistu, politikų ir aktyvistu iš Ukrainos, iš Kievo, kaip aš suprantu, tuo išsiaiškinsim svečiuose mūsų jau nekartą matytas Viktoras Tregubovas. So, hi, Viktor. Hi. As I see from your surroundings, you are in Kiev. Yeah, I am in Kyiv. I am uh, well, specifically in my home. Uh, well, uh, but now I'm trying to work to serve both as a mil- as a reservist, as an officer, and uh, as a volunteer. Uh, <laughs> well, two in a time. Okay, Victor. So you know, it, it might sound stupid question for you, but tell tell us a bit how is like a day or a day in life uh, looks in Kyiv uh, today. Let's say, how was your night? Uh, did you sleep? Uh, did, did, did you have electricity, water? Uh, what about mm. the food and, and stuff like that? Okay, first things first. Uh, we have electricity and we have water for now. I don't think how long it will last, but for now we have. The problem is in Mariupol and in some Kharkiv uh, districts, but in Kyiv everything is for now fine with that. Uh, about food, we have food stores working. Some of food stores, some of the biggest supermarkets uh, actually are working now, but uh, they are working on a uh, well, tight schedule. They alone, they... Uh, well give, uh, give access to people uh, to a uh, specific sum of people in a time and they close earlier than, than well before because we have a curfew so yeah basically we got our basic needs uh, well uh, uh, completed uh, i forgot the proper words but uh, well the problem is uh, actually there are, are two problems for living in kiev now first of the problems is uh, uh, shellings that fall uh, missiles that fall on our heads and uh, the second one is uh, saboteur groups that run to, they tr- they're trying to run in our streets and cause havoc but the last is already gone for now uh, because uh, our territorial defense works really well. They just, uh, well, catch them and shoot them on spot, so that's not a problem. Uh, the problem is missiles, because uh, shellings, because the hits uh, became much fr- more frequent uh, in the last days, and they uh, now is targeting civilian infrastructure. Well, and in some cases specifically, civilian infrastructure. And for us, that really became a problem. You just don't know, will your house be hit or what? Of course, we have aerial alert. Of course, our anti-aircraft uh, system works, but it is not, uh, well, uh, 400% uh, anti-missile proof, first of all. And you need uh, some time to get to, to the shelter. And the rockets uh, hit uh, hard during the, well, during the first hit. So th- that's uh, a bit of problem, but I suppose we have already have some kind of psychological uh, well, resistance to that because, well, that's how human heads work. Well, I, I saw just uh, like five minutes ago uh, from Reuters, uh, uh, Kiev's uh, region uh, that is um, Borodyanka and basically the Soviet uh, era building is destroyed. The, the middle part of the building is, is just an empty hole. So how does it look in, in, in Kiev? Uh, do you have uh, much housing lost or, 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 or they were uh, targeting like exactly. in, in, in uh, Kharkiv the squares uh, or, or, or any other governmental buildings? Oh, well, uh, as I said, the situation in Kiev is not so bad, maybe just because some are uh, satellite cities taking most of the heat. Mm-hmm. Because there are tank combats uh, there, because they are, are shelling them not only from uh, uh, long range missiles, but also uh, multiple rocket launchers. And uh, yes, Borodyanka is uh, just hell now. And some, uh, some other uh, small towns in the north of, uh, on the north of Kiev, yeah, also they have a big problem and they, some of them are more or less destroyed. But Kyiv, uh, well, I, I suppose the Russians uh, have some doubts about attacking Kyiv. First of all, assault on Kyiv uh, will be too costly. They cannot afford that. Uh, I don't think they can theoretically take Kyiv by assault, at least for now. And uh, actually, uh, well, shelling Kyiv from uh, uh, MLR, 
uh, as they shall have of too many international journalists here, too too dense uh, buildings here that will be that will create uh, like image of Aleppo in in maybe a few hours, and uh, that's be really shocking for international community. So I suppose for now they have some doubts, but I afraid they may uh, take the tactics because basically they switch it from tactics of so subtle strikes to the tactics of terror. They just try to raise uh, the stake so high uh, that uh, well <laughs> that they can sell the stopping of these atrocities uh, as their uh, well uh, leverage on negotiations. Uh, well, I, I, I think from what we saw after uh, you know Kharkiv, uh, nothing is like uh, out of the limit for them, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's just uh, more cameras, uh, more international cameras in Kiev than Kharkiv. Uh, but still, uh, that's of course. Uh, I uh, all my heart is now with guys in Kharkiv, except uh, this part of my heart that is in Kherson and Mariupol, because uh, everywhere there is uh, a nightmare. Uh, for for us in Kiev, it's bad, but it, it's uh, not nearly so bad. And uh, thanks to our territorial defense, and of course thanks to our anti-aircraft uh, system and its operators, so they are like a saints for us now. And I even joke with that after that war, the uh, well, the document that you served in anti-aircraft will be more respected than the star of hero of Ukraine. So <laughs> that's like like love saving. What the, the, I mean, there's like um, I'm speechless, you know, to to basically comment uh, your answers, but uh, I'm gonna try to ask a few questions. Uh, from what we know, there is a column uh, like. Uh, approaching Kiev, uh, which is like 40 miles or 60 kilometers of Russian troops. Now it's stopped somewhere 20, 25 kilometers from Kiev. Uh, what do you know from inside Kiev about those guys uh, that are approaching you with the uh, heavy artillery and uh, tanks and support units? Uh, well, uh, they have no power to assault Kiev, that's all. Uh, we, uh, first of all, because our guys stopped them on the eastern bank of Dnieper, they just cannot close even the half circle ar around Kiev. Uh, we destroyed their supply lines. And they actually got pretty in pretty bad situation because you need uh, the supply lines if you want to make a full attack with many tanks. So for now, yes, of course, it's well, I don't know to use uh, bad metaphors, uh, but it's like they have uh, mass, but have no impulse to use that mass. And we have our ways to deal with that mass if, they, if they'll if try uh, to go further. So it's not so scary for us, as it seems. For now, this guy is just sitting in Chernobyl exclusion zone, or well, um, making <laughs> their potence as a man lower and lower in the time because, uh, well, radiation is not good for your health. So, well, we, more or less, we're, we're fine with that. We can uh, work with that. <laughs> Do you have any information about the other uh, nuclear plants? Uh, like, uh, because we saw that, uh, I don't remember right now, the name of, of the city where people just came out and uh, they formed a, a live, you know, barricade from people um, and stopped the troops from entering the, the, this uh, uh, power plant city. Uh, like, what do you hear from inside, like, uh, Ukraine? Uh, regarding the, any other nuclear plants that can be taken over by, by the aggressor? Well, that's uh, Energodar, uh, the, city, mm -hmm. the town you mentioned. It works with the Zaporizhia power plant, a nuclear power plant. Yeah, we have some affairs, first of all, for Chernobyl power plant. But Chernobyl is mostly, uh, for now, it's mostly uh, switched off. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Parisia is actually uh, very more <laughs> very much working. So that's uh, that's a problem in terms of ecology, that's a problem in uh, terms of uh, power consumption in UN. But I suppose actually Russians also do not really want to do something with that. First of all, it's uh, well, it's nuclear, everything nuclear is uh, sensitive, I'd say. And second of all, you actually don't want to be uh, uh, somewhere near near uh, the nuclear reactors that, that blows and they are near and no one from them is uh, one to actually to be <laughs> to become uh, some characters of the new film of Netflix so you know. 
How, how, would, how would you describe the, the mood of, of, of people in, in Ukraine, let's say in Kiev? Uh, because I heard an interview today in the morning, like at 6 a.m., uh, a, woman, a woman was speaking that uh, basically in the beginning they were afraid, shocked, uh, and now they are basically just ready to, to, to fight the aggressor, every single one. I think it was in Kharkiv this woman was speaking and she was saying, you know, uh, Russian world, uh, what, what are you trying to save us from, you know? And, uh, so what is the vibe in, in Kiev? Well, uh, that's uh, part of Ukrainian mentality, and uh, I even have some problems with uh, my foreign friends because uh, they are like, why are you smiling? Why are you smiling? Uh, well, I'm smiling because that's how our heads works. Uh, I just from a Kiev, from uh, to Kiev supermarket, I tried to buy drugs. Uh, well, I mean, medicine and. Uh, and uh, just uh, well, all the drama is in that queue was really, I'd say, uh, even joyful. And it could sound strange, but that's uh, oh well, we uh, we are alive. Our uh, guys, uh, well, uh, fucking sorry, Russians, really hard near Kiev, and uh, well, and bombs fell somewhere. Uh, in, for now, not in our house. So that's pretty much a point to be optimistic. And uh, of course, we are psychologically mobil psychologically mobilized. Also, one one really great things about Ukraine in the peacetime, we, we tend to internal quarrels. We are to to, well, uh, internal passive aggression and so on. In well, we are not the uh, easiest guys in the world in peaceful times. But during such crises, I call it actually my dance stance. Uh, uh, during such crises, uh, well, we are really resilient. We are much more resilient, and you even sometimes you cannot describe, you cannot compare your own society. Well, uh, now and ten days ago, I'd say. Well, uh, how how would you describe you know this this dude in Russia? This uh, I'm not sure what word we can use here, but uh, basically the, an asshole uh, who who just attacked you know uh, the, the the holy site uh, for 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 the Jewish, and he's explaining to the world that he's uh, denazifying de the, the Ukrainians. Uh, what can you say about this war criminal who is obviously going to end up? Uh, uh, you know, dead or 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 in jail. Well, Putin Hulu, I'd say, uh, for well, I think he's the, well. Uh, some of us think he's nuts, but personally, I suppose there there were some rumors and uh, for long that he has uh, well uh, oncology illness, uh, like a cancer of uh, in, in Russian it's like prostate. Mm -hmm. I forgot yeah, 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 we understand you all good. Yeah, and uh, it really looks like uh, something like that because uh, he act, uh, he like actually acts as a person who have really nothing to lose, who had uh, make even his wildest and most idiotic wishes uh, to come true, and uh, that can experiment with human lives uh, in any direction. So he is uh, actually acting like a person who's dying. Uh, well, for whom is no tomorrow and who just want to make his way to history either in good way or in bad way. Uh, but the good thing now is that he is losing. He fell the victim of his own propaganda. He, uh, well, Russians really believe that we will uh, uh, well, meet them with flowers, that it could be a four-day operation, that uh, they, try, they need just to encircle some cities, kill some pro-Ukrainian activists, and it will be over. And and such, uh, well, Ukrainian ar uh, armed forces is just some kind of bunch of videos like, ha ha ha, smishny ha Well, uh, well, now they are not uh, <laughs> so so jolly. Uh, they underestimated us, uh, well, uh, incomparably. So, yeah, we we, we, we see, their, we see you know the ment their, mentality. Yeah. They actually attacked the Ukraine that never existed. They attacked their own imaginary Ukraine. And now, while well, real Ukraine is kicking their asses. Uh, the only problem here is that I cannot see good exit scenario for Putin. There is maybe some exit scenarios for Russia, but for Putin, there is no. I think, yeah, well, he, under I think he understands that. And, you know, that, that, that's, that's the, the worst thing right, right now. He's a, he's a dead man uh, Well, anyway. Because he cannot uh, negotiate, he cannot negotiate, uh, he cannot win. 
but he cannot also negotiate truth and he can, cannot well actually lose. He cannot afford that. Any of scenario possible is death. Is well, is death for him. So do, that's do, our do, main problem because he cannot stop because uh, that genie is already out of the bottle. So do do you think he's gonna go go all out and use some kind of you know dirty bombs or or, or tactical? Uh, atomic weapons. Uh, what, what do you think? Is is it possible? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. Because uh, any for me, I suppose any use of atomic uh, nuclear weapons could relate to use of nuclear weapons uh, uh, from other side, and it will be the well uh, the reason for NATO to involve. Because well, you cannot not involve. In that particular situation, if any country use nuclear weapons, uh, doesn't even mean how, who do you want to involve or not. That's the red line you just sh shouldn't uh, let anyone cross. So I suppose Putin knows that, and I suppose he don't want uh, a quick defeat. Uh, so he is just acting, uh, he has no strategy for now, he is acting in uh, just a tactical means. What should we do to, uh, well, uh, to make our situation a bit better? Uh, but there is no strategic end. Uh, in the end, uh, any uh, well, improvement of the situation won't help. Well, you know, he probably has this option of, you know, doing the serious scenario, basically burning everything to the ground, but... Uh... Do you think his own uh, army could carry that and the, the generals? Uh, because we see that uh, some of the troops that are in, in Ukraine, they're basically left without food. Uh, they were on some fake contracts. Uh, I just uh, saw the video before before talking with you from uh, Gordon and uh, Kuleba that uh, basically those those guys are explaining that they were left for four or five days standing you know, without food uh, in, in, in some place. Uh, so do you think it's possible that the uh, Russian army won't uh, take some commands like uh, burn to the ground or something like that? I think they, uh, well, uh, they could make uh, some moves to show that they follow the commands, but they can actually make a little sabotage in themselves because their morale now is really at the lowest. Well, imag just imagine. Uh, you're a Russian soldier. You was promised that you will uh, go to, uh, to Ukraine, uh, there will be flowers under your tank, and after that, maybe after a few days without any real fighting, you'll go, you'll go back to Russia. Now you in Ukraine, you're shelling with bombs. Any local person you meet, uh, being absolutely pro Russian speaking, absolutely uh, well Russian seen, and even Russian national uh, told told to you that you're occupant, you're messy, uh, die in hell uh, and let your children die with you. Uh, so, well, that's uh, pretty embarrassing, I'd say. And you have no food. And you have, uh, and you are under constant shelling. And there are also Bayraktars uh, that can shoot you from the long range you cannot even see. Well, I'd say that's not really good for morale and any speeches of political officer uh, like we're here to save these people from NATO become a little obsolete. So there, there, there is a question which is often raised, you know, like maybe not so loud in, in, the, in, in Europe, basically that uh, we are not doing enough for you guys. So how do you see... Uh, like not uh, involving, you know, in military action, uh, the, the European countries, uh, the US. Uh, how, how do you guys, when you are fighting, when you're struggling, like uh, in sheltering from bombs, uh, uh, how do you talk about the West and not like uh, basically sending uh, troops to, to support you? Well, uh, it, it differs. Uh, any help is appreciated now. Uh, or, well, virtually any. But of course, some kind of help looks more like, uh, well, I'd say, uh, uh, excuses, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, like we send you uh, five uh, well, helms, yeah, where that's... is you guys, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's pretty ridiculous, but any help can be appreciated, and uh, of course we need everything, we need money, 
because well it's hard to um, for, hard for our economics to fun function uh, under constitutional so we need money really we need uh, weapons and the uh, and the problem is that even some uh, countries that provided weapons to us actually i even uh, me as an officer i could see that they are not really believing we could give a proper resistance because weapons they provided was weapons from for guerrilla by fire like in Afghanistan, like with some kind of major heads. Uh, they don't really believe that we can stand in a direct fight, direct fight army to army. They uh, provided us with weapons, uh, well, considering that, uh, that our army will be dead in a few days and Russia, uh, and we will use guerrilla tactics like partisans and so on, so on. Uh, nope. As you see, nope. Uh, and we need actually some real uh, well, army weapons, not just uh, some kind of anti-tank uh, anti missiles that you can shoot from behind, uh, but, uh, well... Yeah, proper plates. artillery and tanks and stuff Anti -plates, like that. Anti-plates, artillery. No, maybe tanks uh, is not in uh, the such a dire need, but uh, also, yes. And uh, automobiles. Uh, armored vehicles uh, and uh, art yeah, artillery I already mentioned, uh, radars, and of course, anti-aircraft defense. It's the thing that needed to, uh, one of the, our options that we actually desperately ask from NATO, but still there's no answer, is just help us to close the sky. Well, the answer, close... the answer we hear in our media, I can tell you, the answer is very simple. They basically are, um, I mean, trying to stay away from the direct conflict uh, and so that, that's what we hear from our diplomats uh, you know in europe uh, that you know it would start a world war three some of some of the you know analytics uh, say they that we are already in in something like this mm -hmm. so basically there is a debate uh, but the, the majority is still like uh, want to keep a distance because the russia has this atomic you know arsenal so that's that's yeah, how how well, first of all, uh, we have saying that we already have World War III in our hands, but only two countries participating. Russia against the world world and Ukraine for the world world. <laughs> world, world. Uh, yeah, so basically we already have a war on our hands and uh, truth to be told, do you see a Russian army? Is this Russian army you now see in action? Is it even a bit similar with that image of Russian army you had maybe a uh, month ago? Is that uh, the Russian army uh, that actually can uh, be a match of NATO? Is that uh, the, the second world's military? Come on. Yeah, everybody that's, sees that, you know, they, they, they are really that's terrible. Hobos. That's freaking hobos. They, they haven't even a good, I don't, not even some kind of modern weapons. They have no good clothes. Like uh, every hour, uh, not uh, I, I don't say I'm not saying about army or special special operation forces. Every hour, guys from territorial defense uh, near them is like a god of war. Is like a uh, character from uh, some computer game with all with all his stuff, and uh, these guys in uh, sorry in dirty, uh, uh, cheap uniforms. Like, come on! So don't uh, let's us not afraid Russian military might because as we see now, Russian military might is pretty much imaginable. There is no uh, well aerial fighters of second uh, sorry fifth generations. There is no unique. Uh, weapons that have no analogs to like Russia propaganda really like the, that saying. Uh, no, the just uh, old Soviet shit and this shit is even older in ver an inverse shape that, you could, uh, that the shit uh, we Ukrainians have. <laughs> so for now it's like not they, uh, they, all, uh, they always told us that they are technologically superior. For now the army we're fighting is technologically inferior. And it's noticeable, so <laughs> that's the case. So, as as you know, as a Ukrainian, what would you say to to to, to the West who is still hesitant of you know some uh, military push uh, to help you you know basically defeat the enemy and um, kick them out of your country and uh, then you know so on. 
guys you can't escape ever that is already going it's either uh, us or them they won't stop in ukraine and you should understand that for now they will come to baltics and they will question nato as a well. whole you can see that putin putin's action is absolutely inadequate that he is actually uh, bro uh, crossed every red line and broke every treaty that he is acting like a pure i'm, I'm sorry pure fucking hitler in that in that particular situation and you well of course i i am i'm hoping that we can st stop him that we <laughs> well uh, ukrainians uh, that are actually not the not the most powerful country or military alliance in the world can stop him i hope for that but uh, if we fail uh, that will be not just our failure it will be your failure it's, it's not about uh, question of refugees or, or economical problems and so on that about putin going further and, and going further not in some kind of long glitching perspective but actually right now in estonia in latvia and uh, and beyond because that's uh, what he is wanting to do he's really acting as an inadequate tyrant and we must stop him well that, that's uh, not seen says that we may be prepared to psychologically but uh, we got to that's uh, my message and uh, not that's not my message that's putin's message to the world i just uh, trying to translate it <laughs> Yeah, Victor. Uh, I mean, most of us, you know, civilians, uh, we understand that this won't stop, and uh, we see history. Basically, uh, you know, in, even in the past twenty years, uh, not, nothing stopped. Just you know, escalated with every every conflict. So the, I know that you don't have much time, you know, and you need some rest. I'm, I'm going to ask you like uh, this last question, like um, your president. Uh, well, we are starting to talk in Europe about him, like uh, the present Churchill. How do you guys see your president uh, from inside? I mean, there were there were some conflicts, you know, between political parties and stuff. But uh, the message that he is sending to the world in the last uh, eight days, and his position and his stance uh, really inspires many people in Europe. Uh, how do you see? I get to be frank with you. It was even cringe for us uh, during the first stage because, uh, well. I, as a member and one of the leader of opposition party, uh, this party with strong, well, I'd say, militaristic stance in uh, aspect of uh, fighting Russian aggression, uh, a party uh, that is actually fully go just to uh, territorial defense or volunteers, I despised him because his initiatives uh, regarding Ukrainian defense were clumsy. His speeches was like uh, some kind of stupid pacifism, like, we don't want a war. We just want to avoid it. We already got war on our hands. So yes, we uh, uh, we despise him. And in the only personal meetings that we have, I uh, gave no. I refused to give my hand to him. Uh, well, just because I was in the status of first officer, and I supposed that he is acting really bad in all the terms of national defense. But big but. Uh, uh, this well, war can change people. War can really change people. I noticed that during my own service, and uh, from the start of the war, well, he is really changed. He he is really different now. And well, some maybe it will cause me some problems uh, lately because uh, people will talk. Okay, you criticize him, but look how cool and iconic he is. Well, now he is. Now he really is. He wasn't. He was really. Uh, far from that he wasn't competent he wasn't uh, well i'd say resilient he wasn't um, uh, forgot the russian word ah, this is it uh, but uh, now he's now he's work changed him and that's uh, well that's a miracle but i'm uh, praise heavens for that miracle and i am now ashamed that i uh, didn't give my hand to that person because uh, now it's a person I am uh, well will be uh, honored to give my hand to give my hand Victor so uh, our hearts are with you uh, I mean uh, maybe you know you guys will stop this evil and uh, you know help uh, the whole Europe mm -hmm. to open their eyes and and, and maybe, maybe even help the, the the civilized Russians to to you know to take back their country from this uh, despot uh, tyrant that they have right now so um, just you know 
keep fighting, uh, stay strong, and uh, you know our blessings and then prayers are with, with you and uh, uh, Slava Ukraini. Heroin Slava. Not that we have any option, but thank you. We will. <laughs> okay, Victor. So so st stay st safe uh, as much as it possible in, in this scenario, and uh, let, let's keep in touch. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, have a chat. You know, next week, and uh, you will already be celebrating the victory. Okay, I, I hope I hope so. Just just write to me <laughs> when it will be done. Okay, thanks. Okay, Victor. Bye. So take take care. Talk to you later.